setting up. Okay, you have rolling left 10. Okay, you have rolling left 10. Big tower point. By the end of 2009, it had been almost three years since engineers had been deployed around the world to help address the supply chain problems, and a year and a half since Boeing missed the delivery date it had originally promised its customers. By the end of 2007, Boeing was facing delays, penalties, and damage to its reputation. We are the systems integrator. We have to be the ones responsible for delivery, quality, cost. And we lost control of that. Problems building the 787 were almost inevitable. One in aerospace should only pick on so many different challenges. Executing a project of such complexity proved to be more than some suppliers could handle. Wrinkles were found in the composite skins from one supplier. Fasteners were incorrectly secured on sections of the tail. There were gaps between units that were supposed to fit tightly together, and some sections arrived at the assembly facility unfinished. We had our partners, and then they had partners who had partners, and the different cultures and the communication uh, was very challenging and added a lot of complexity. And it was not just the suppliers who were struggling. Just days before the scheduled first flight of the 787, Boeing discovered a flaw in its own design. Higher than expected stress, where the wing joined the fuselage, would force redesign work and further delays. And with a tightly packed schedule that was absolutely delicate, once you get one disruption, it starts to cascade. So you had this chaos building. The company's strategy to better manage the enormous expense of new airplane development was failing, and the Dreamliner was still far from a viable airplane. Boeing shares are down a quarter, the third delay of the Boeing 787 pushed back the schedule for the fourth time. Now Boeing has to tell its 51 customers it won't be ready before the end of next year. Launch airline a and for one is furious. Soon the Dreamliner was on a path to being three years behind schedule, an unprecedented delay in Boeing's history. The perseverance of that team was phenomenal, and of our supplier team too. We started over. I, 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 I mean, Everything had to get reworked. Everything. Boeing solved the problem by throwing people at it and sending hundreds of engineers to Italy, South Carolina, Kansas, and to Japan. Kathy Moody was one of hundreds of Boeing employees dispatched to supplier locations. She moved to Grattaglia, Italy, to help Alenia, the manufacturer of the center fuselage, meet the requirements and deadlines whatever they need. If they need me to um, help lead, if they need me to help get them some engineering help, there's always that balance between doing the work for them, but then also showing them how to do the work. In the case of two suppliers in South Carolina, the intervention became permanent. Boeing purchased them for a cost of more than a billion dollars. And over time, they brought control of the whole process. So I think that they learned a big and expensive lesson. By the end of 2009, it had been almost three years since engineers had been deployed around the world to help address the supply chain problems. And a year and a half since Boeing missed the delivery date it had originally promised its customers. Finally, in December, a finished Dreamliner was ready for its first flight from the time it started as something on a piece of paper to an actual airplane, the amount of work and effort that took to get there, uh, you know, 
it's five, six years sometimes of people's lives that they've put into that one single thing. You do feel that. I mean, you think it's your airplane. You live, eat, breathe it. Mike Carricker was the test pilot and had been involved in the design of the plane since the very beginning. We had great faith in the airplane. A couple days before, the engine guy, the fuselage guy, the landing gear guy, the brake guy, all these different people got up and said, my part of the airplane is ready to go. And then at the end of the day, the chief project engineer and the vice president of the division signed the safety of flight letter. I've covered quite a few first flights in my career. The first flight of the 787 was like nothing else I've experienced. It's so exciting. <laughs> of course, there was a huge air of expectation. The build-up was excruciating, quite honestly. culmination of all that pride and ownership that you have uh, to see the airplane come off the ground it's one of the most exciting things that you'll ever experience it was a rapturous applause everybody was just so relieved to see that airplane get into the sky okay do you have, uh... Up. Okay, uh, left, I rolled the airplane a little left. All the instruments rolled left, and the horizon rolled to the left. We climbed to 1 3,000, and we went in the clouds. The airplane worked uh, flawlessly. And then we popped out the other side. <laughs> I'll never forget the picture. In the front left windscreen of the 787 was the uh, snow-capped Olympic Mountains. Just framed. There are 100,000 people in this world right now who would love to be sitting in this seat looking through the snow-capped Olympic Mountains framed in the front left window of a 787. And I got to do it. On September 25th, 2011, more than three years behind schedule, Boeing delivered its first Streamliner to all Nippon Airways. Soon, other airlines began taking delivery of the 787s they had ordered years before, and the plane was finally in service. When passengers first walk on board a Dreamliner, we literally want them to say, wow. That was actually written in the design brief. That was a goal that we had. The results of Boeing's research are evident everywhere in the plane's interior design. They did something with the roof of the cabin, so it seemed kind of dome-like. You're entering some a really pleasant space rather than the tube. The window is probably my favorite because there was an airline in the world that asked us to put big windows in the airplane that absolutely came from our work with potential passengers. They can control the, the darkness and lightness with their own fixture. The airlines can cleverly control the lighting in the cabin to influence your circadian rhythm so that you're waking up for breakfast with a sort of glow of a dawn type of light, breaching full daylight levels by the time you land so you feel more awake. Because the fuselage is composite. And because composite is stronger than aluminum, it can withstand a higher pressurization in the cabin. The air inside a 787 mimics an altitude about 2,000 feet lower than a typical airliner, which makes it more comfortable to breathe and travel less tiring. It's an amazing uh, aeroplane to fly on, and it is the future. It's absolutely the future of aviation. The 787 has made air travel more efficient for airlines and more convenient for passengers because it carries fewer people long distances. Routes with lower demand can now be non-stop or point to point. London to Austin, Denver to Tokyo, San Francisco to Chengdu, Sydney to Delhi. The whole argument of hub and spoke is gone. Large jets are simply not in vogue anymore. The point to point philosophy basically took over. Uh, it was driven by business strategy, technology, and frankly, common sense. People don't want to change at hubs. 
As the first 787s entered service, Boeing's bet on a smaller, more efficient plane appeared to have predicted trends in air travel correctly. And Airbus, which had made its bet on a jumbo jet designed to fly people between major hubs, found few airline customers and was facing the possibility it would never fully recoup its investment on the A380. Airbus may sell 300, they possibly might sell 400, whereas Boeing will sell literally thousands of 787s and make a lot more money. By the beginning of 2013, 50 Dreamliners were in service and there were orders for over 800. We delivered the airplanes that we said we were going to deliver and we were coming out of the end of the year on a real high. And then we had our first incident in Boston. Emergency crews rushing to Logan Airport to put out a fire on a jumbo jet. It's a black eye for Boeing. We observed a heavy smoke condition and we found a fire condition in the avionics compartment. The smoke was traced to a meltdown in the Dreamliner's lithium ion batteries. Used to provide startup power and emergency backup in flight, lithium ion batteries are lighter, more efficient, and more powerful than traditional batteries. Boeing was the first commercial plane maker to use lithium ion batteries on this scale. But now that decision was under attack. Now we have breaking news from the FAA tonight. They are grounding the Dreamliner. Just over a year after the 787 had finally entered service, the Federal Aviation Administration grounded the entire fleet. It's grounded until it can prove to the federal government that the airline has fixed the problem with the battery that continues to overheat. We had never had an airplane grounded in our history, ever. 50 airplanes in service, and they're all on the ground. We're just getting hammered by the media every day, trashing the airplane, trashing us. It was one of the darkest hours uh, that we had. If we didn't get that airplane fixed, you could lose the company. What a disaster. You had the top executive, Ray Connor, going to Japan and making apologies and telling people that they were going to fix the problem. And meanwhile, you had the engineers and mechanics working on it nonstop. It was a very high pressure situation. The way the team rallied, the commitment that took place, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It was our finest hour. We brought in experts from around the country with respect to lithium ion batteries, uh, auto guys. We brought people from NASA. We had some experts within the Boeing company too because they use an awful lot of lithium batteries in the space world. We were never able to really establish any single thing that caused it. So what we ended up having to do is look at all the potential things that could have caused it and then put a solution in place to address those. The solution included wrapping the battery's eight cells in insulation, enclosing the block in a stainless steel box, and creating a titanium tube through which smoke could vent out of the airplane in the event of a malfunction. Tests showed that the enclosure could contain an explosion, expanding but not breaking. And then engineers created the worst case scenario. All cells go off on a fully configured 787, a hundred and whatever million dollar airplane. And we had these two batteries that we heated up and then had them vent off. And it worked perfectly. Plane 140 at four. In April of 2013, Boeing got the news it needed to hear. The government will allow airlines to resume flying their Boeing 787s nearly four months after they were grounded. I said we would throw a party and we threw a party. We threw a heck of a party. The Dreamliner has become the fastest selling twin aisle jet in Boeing's history. The company now has orders for well over a thousand. Enough to sustain at least seven years of production and more orders are expected. Enthusiasm for the 787 prompted Airbus to launch its own composite twin-aisle plane. 
the A350 debuted and became an immediate success. Airbus secured nearly 800 orders, including one from a customer that had flown Boeing planes exclusively for decades. Japan Airlines' decision to buy Airbus A350 was a big, big blow to Boeing because, you know, part of the reason for all the outsourcing Boeing did was to keep Boeing's hold on certain customers and then sp specifically they had a, a virtual monopoly in Japan. They've lost it and they've lost it in part I think because of the problems with the 787, because of the delays. They have somewhat lost a little bit of their faith in us to put all their eggs in our basket and uh, that was that was hard. We messed up and we lost a campaign as a result of it, but uh, we fight very hard. Airbus, they're tough competitors, uh, but I want to beat them. It took longer and it cost more. We reached too far in too many ways, but sometimes these, uh, these big game changers are, are more troubling than you map them out to begin with. But uh, looking back on it, we built exactly the right airplane. Over its century in business, Boeing has learned that in the high stakes world of commercial aerospace, risk is unavoidable. Failures are inevitable. Each success is hard won. And some, like the 787, have changed the way the world travels forever. They've changed the entire paradigm of aviation with the 787. This is going to be one of the most successful aeroplane programs in history, although it had probably the most traumatic birth 